This past Thursday, we celebrated the Feast of the Ascension of our Lord, which in Armenian is Hamparzum. It's when we remember that Jesus went back up into heaven. And it's appropriate, therefore, that in our liturgical calendar today, this Sunday, is called the Second Palm Sunday, because whereas the first Palm Sunday remembers Jesus' entrance into the earthly Jerusalem, the second Palm Sunday remembers his entrance into the heavenly Jerusalem. So today is a day we remember that Jesus went into the heavenly Jerusalem, and that's why we call it the second Palm Sunday. In order for us to enter the heavenly Jerusalem, we have to follow Jesus. We have to follow the Good Shepherd. And we were talking about this a little bit last week, and we'll continue this week about what it means for us to be God's sheep. And particularly, what does that mean in the context of the 23rd Psalm? We went through the first few verses of it last week. We're going to do a few more verses this week, and we'll continue with it next week as well. The next verse is, He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, when I was a kid, I remember I used to enjoy, for a period of my childhood, uh, I was really enjoying mazes, you know, finding the way through mazes. They would be published in different children's books. And sometimes, um, because I liked it so much, my parents would even get me uh, a book for Christmas or for my birthday that was a maze book, and I would enjoy doing that. And I even, at one point, I know this is kind of dorky, but at one point I made up my own maze book, and I would give it to my friends and see if they could find their way through the mazes I made. But I quickly figured out, and I'm sure you have too, that... Um, when trying to figure out a way through a maze, uh, you can start and hit all kinds of dead ends, but the easiest way to figure out your way through a maze is you look at the end of the maze, and then you look backwards to figure out the best path. Um, so that's the simplest way to get through something that's really very difficult to navigate through. Well, Jesus rose from the dead. He reached the end, and he was risen from the dead, and he ascended into heaven. So we know that he reached his destination, and we know that he knows the way there. And Jesus said that he knows the way. And he said that he is the path. And he even came back. And we remember this on the Feast of Assumption. He came back and he took his mother with him to be in heaven as well. So he not only knows the way there, he knows how to guide us there. He knows how to take us there. There are many different religions and even some, some really... Uh, odd groups that call themselves churches that really aren't, they're just using the name church, um, that claim to know the way to heaven. But in fact, even though they might look good in the beginning, after a while, ultimately they're dead ends. And there are a lot of dead ends out there that may look good at different ways along the path, such as the Unitarian Universalist Church. They say Jesus is just one of many enlightened it's not really necessary to just follow him to get into heaven. Or the Jews who don't recognize Jesus as God, they don't recognize him as the Messiah, as the Savior. And while there's a lot of beautiful teachings in Judaism, a lot that certainly dovetail with our Christian faith, ultimately that faith doesn't get people to heaven. So too the teachings of Hinduism, so too the teachings of Islam, and on and on and on. These other religions are not the path to heaven. Jesus said that there's one path, and he is the path, and he is the one that can take us to his heavenly Father. He said, no one comes to the Father but through me. So if we want to get there, if we want to get to the end, our destination, we have to go through Christ. There is no other path. Every other one is ultimately a dead end. The guidance that's provided for us in and through the Holy Church it is the reliable guide to get from here to heaven. And as we learn the teachings of the church, embrace them, embody them, incorporate them into our lives, we have the pathway. God guides us through these to the destination that we seek. To enter heaven, however, one of the things that has to happen is we have to be made right. Because the Bible tells us that nothing unclean will enter heaven. And even if we have one small sin, we're unclean and unworthy to enter into a place that is sinless. So in order to enter, Jesus can take us to the door, but in order to pass through the door, we need to be completely cleansed of sins. And that's something that Jesus offers to provide us through his grace, through the sacraments of baptism first, and through reception of Holy Communion on a weekly basis. 
this is the way that God cleanses us by his grace and makes us worthy to pass through that door into heaven. Every Sunday, we are to come to receive the sacrament in humility, understanding that we have sinned and there has been damage done to our souls. The path the Good Shepherd has laid for us is the one true, reliable path to heaven. Jesus said, pick up your crosses and follow me. Live a life of self-sacrificial love. Follow my teachings, do what I say. And if we do this, we have the assurance of heaven. So if we follow Christ's lead, we will be, by his grace, made right. We will be made, in that sense, righteous. Therefore, he leads me in the paths of righteousness. But the quote isn't only he leads me in the paths of righteousness. It's that he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. So how do we understand this term, his namesake? Well, it could be understood in a variety of ways, but I think probably the best way to understand it is his name, literally. What is the name of God as we know him? When he was incarnate, was Jesus. And what does the name Jesus mean? Jesus means God saves. God saves. So his name means salvation. So he leads us in the paths of righteousness for the sake of our salvation. He leads us in the paths of righteousness not only for our salvation, but so that we too might help others to get on the path of Christ so that they too might know his salvation as well. He leads us in the paths of righteousness for his namesake means he leads us in the paths of righteousness for our salvation and for the salvation of others. And the next line is, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. When we follow the Good Shepherd, he leads us from this life through this dark valley of death that we see looming in front of us. And he leads us right through it to a place of light and to greener pastures to a place that the Good Shepherd knows is a place we will receive the best nourishment for all eternity. And he offers that to us in this life, a foretaste, and fully in the life to come. As Christians, we need not fear death, because death, and I should say fear, has to do with punishment. And those who are living a life of fear, concerned with the punishment of God, are not living love-based lives with God. Because when we have a loving relationship with our Savior, when we embrace His grace, understand that we're sinners, we embrace His grace, then we are filled with His love. And once we're filled with that love, then the fear goes away. Even the fear of death goes away. As Christians, we need not fear death, because we know that in Christ we have eternal life. In today's epistle reading, there is a line that says, for instance from 1 John, I write this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have eternal life. And we have this assurance within our liturgy that we are told that we are saved by the blood of Christ. We have been saved. And we are saved. If God is our shepherd, we will not fear death. That means the diagnosis of a terminal illness won't make us afraid. If God is our shepherd, if we really embrace him, that means that the diagnosis of advanced heart disease or advanced cancer won't frighten us because we will know that we have the promise of heaven and we know that you have the promise of eternal life with our loving Savior. We have the promise of being taken to the heavenly Jerusalem. In addition, we're told not to fear evil. So not only the evil of death, but evil in general. Some people worry and spend a lot of their lives worrying that evil of some kind will befall them. And we live in a society that fuels this fear, especially when watching television. Television tries to train us to be afraid in many different respects. Could something in your house be killing your children? Tune in at 5 o'clock to find out. Is your cell phone causing brain damage? Tune in at 11 to get the details. Are sexual predators living in your back door, by your back door, right around the block from you, right around the corner? Tune in and learn how to find out. Is your house killing you? Could you have radon in your house? Tune in and find out how to protect yourself and your loved ones. How can you protect yourself from a carjacking? Find out tonight at 7. Will you lose your Social Security? Will you end up homeless? 
Tune in and find out how to keep this from happening, what you can do to prevent this. A vital test that your health insurer might not cover. Tune in to find out what it is. We hear things like this on a regular basis. Be afraid, be very afraid. Because if we're scared, then we'll tune in and they'll get higher ratings and they can sell more advertising space and they make more money. Now there's nothing wrong with having concerns and realizing that there's certain things that we need to be mindful of and being mindful of those things. But we need not live our lives in fear because we have the promise that God will always protect us and he gives us the promise of heaven. And that's where we need to be centered, at that place of peace that comes through a prayerful, ongoing relationship with Christ. Being mindful and careful is wise, but we need not live our lives in fear. So I want to encourage you this week, if you feel full of worry, if you feel full of fear about something, offer it up to the Lord in prayer. Be mindful of what you can be mindful of in the way that he would want you to be mindful of it. God wants us to be responsible and take appropriate precautions. But ultimately, give your fear to the Lord. Trust that he will walk you through this and you will arrive at a safe place. And when we can do that, then we can have his peace in our hearts and have joy in our hearts. And that peace and joy in the right relationship we have with God will trump any fear that we might face. Understanding ourselves as sheep that belong to the Good Shepherd is vital for our salvation. Listening to his call is essential for us to arrive at our destination and also to be spiritually full each day with the grace that we desire to have. This week, if you haven't already done so, I want to encourage you to learn the 23rd Psalm by heart, to memorize the 23rd Psalm, because it is a great gift that God has given us to guide us from here to heaven. Join in if you know. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the 